hello friends welcome back to my channel and uh, today I'm going to take up a very interesting topic about parametrics in AutoCAD and uh, uh, in this video I'll be covering up how to e basically equalize the area of two geometric figures so kindly stay with me and before starting the video I kindly request you kindly subscribe subscribe to my channel if you have not if you have done thank you so much all right uh, I have a uh, ordinary AutoCAD drawing with me and today I'll be taking up the two geometrical figures first rectangle and second the circle and we'll be equalizing their areas by using the parametric manager in the parametric tab here is the parametric tab you can see this is the various tabs this is the parametric tab view tab manage tab so I'll be taking up only this parametric tab where we have auto constraints but the dimensional constraints geometric constraints and manage this is the parametric manager okay so let's start with the video uh, and friends uh, try to understand the video very patiently and with a uh, lot of uh, you know enthusiasm okay so if I have a uh, you know I go to home tab if I have a rectangle with me okay I take a rectangle and I just draw a simple rectangle and if and I have a circle you can always uh, use a circle here with me okay so but I haven't assigned any units to it so I can go to the UN units and here this is the decimal unit I have used angle units for decimal degrees and insertion scale is meters for here so I can use it but uh, to be more precise I'll delete this and I'll what I do is I draw a rectangle of specified length and breadth so I say rectangle you click here and I say D enter and say I assign 20 units its length and uh, the width would be 10.0 units so this I, this I get a rectangle over here okay so for uh, more fun I am so more to make the video interesting I can assign the right color to it so that it get differentiated and uh, again I can what I do is I can just what I do is I can just draw a circle here of any radius maybe uh, maybe something any radius whatever if you like a simple you can assign a green color to it okay now what I am going to do is I am going to enter the parametric tab so this is a parametric tab where we have different parameters I have earlier made a video uh, I think it was the second or third video when I started this channel it was about how to actually uh, you know uh, create a and edit a table and a chair assembly in the canteen if you're sitting in a canteen how to uh, you know uh, create a relationship constraint the basic geometrics constraints means a relationship or a fortification defadization a relationship between the two irregular or irregular figures so now what I am here going to do is I am going to select the entire assembly uh, so the, the entire rectangle with this help of rubber bending when I select I'll just click here the button auto constraint it will auto constrain my geometry when I click here auto constraint the auto constraint and apply it see this is the parallel auto constraint this is the parallel this is the perpendicular it means the perpendicular will remain perpendicular and parallel bar will remain parallel okay and then I come here to the uh, circle what I do is I assign a dimensional constraint uh, uh, the radius I constrain this geometry by clicking here just click just select and enter and just click it and see radius 1 rad1 means this is the radius one now what is going to happen here is if I uh, have constrained this geometry by applying the dimensional constraint when I double click, click this I can assign any value to the radius one maybe say 6 so it will enlarge to 6 units see it will automatically bec become a bigger one okay the same things are going to happen here but I have to apply the constraints so what constraints will I, will I be applying? I'll be applying the vertical constraint, vertical constraint, where we have linear, horizontal, and vertical. First, I'll take up a linear constraint. I click, click it here, and then right click and select object. When you select object, you can select this, the linear bar, and just move it up. See, it is 20. We have already assigned it. Similarly, you go again to the contextual tab, click over here, and say horizontal, say vertical. Now, vertical. This is the vertical bar, and this is the horizontal. I will click it here right click say object and click it here so you can assign the vertical bar also now 
Now this full geometry, the geometry is a simple geometry uh, rectangle is fully constrained now. So I have d1 variable with me, d2 variable with me. In the circle I have the variable radius. Why I am saying variable? Because their values can be changed at any time, any point of time. Okay. Now if I click here, I am doing no magic, I am just clicking here, parametrics manager, you got to see a, a sort of MS Excel sheet, a Microsoft Excel sheet. Okay. I just can enlarge it for you people and maybe just okay and I just move a geometry uh, a bit closer so that uh, it is easily available easily visible to everybody okay so now what I'm going to do is see by default in this we have th this is a tabular form here we have the name the dimensional constraint parameter here with the name column the expressions column and the value column now here the d1 d1 is the length so I will double click it double click it and I will delete this and I will assign a simple variable alphabet L so that L is 20 so it will change here it will change here to L okay this is L here D2 is the breadth I will double click and change it to B so B is the breadth so B is the breadth of the you can see it clearly B is the breadth of the rectangle and L is the length of the rectangle and here again you can see this is the radius but rad is diff rad is difficult to handle I will simply say R small r so it will change to R okay now now the objective of preparing this video is basically to equalize both the areas what should I do that these two areas become equal and upon changing single variable the dependent variable changes I repeat what should I do that upon changing the independent variable the the whole the values of uh, the, the whole the values and the area of the both the figures remains the same so how do we do this first of all let me repeat the length is 20 the breadth is the breadth is 10 so the area is C uh, so the area would be 200 of course we know but that is L into B but now I will assign a simple something more over here I'll go here and this is create a new user parameter I create a new user parameter I click it here and this is user 1 I say it capital A capital A is the area of the rectangle please my dear friends do remember this is the area of the rectangle now what is the area of the rectangle of course we have studied in since our third or fourth grade that is L into B L sorry L small L into B that's it so it the outcome the value should be 200 of course when I click enter see 200 so area of rectangle is 200 now let's assign a different variable user parameter so not variable that is say for example uh, D caps lock D now this is D is the area of the circle okay now I have to put the expression here what is the area of the circle we all know that that is pi sorry pi into R into R that is pi R square of course I am doing pi R square okay so this is so this is the area 130.10 square meter so this if the area of uh, if the, sorry if the radius of a circle is 6 units the area would be of course 113 square 113 square units okay now if I change the uh, radius here over here say I say 9 say I say 8 automatically the area will change see I put it here the it has become bigger and this has come out to be this has also changed and now if I again changes to uh, say 12 it will again change the area okay now let's come back to the topic now what shall I do so that the, the both these areas become same so that upon changing the single variable the independent variable say I in this I change the independent I take the uh, independent uh, variable to be L what should I do that upon just changing the length of the rectangle the area of the circle also changes and the area of the rectangle it will definitely change upon changing the length the area of the rectangle will change but what should I do how should I relate these two things so that the area of circle also changes now just see just see let me open the uh, whiteboard for me so here what I do is I know the area of circle is pi r square okay and area 
of rectangle is L into B. Okay, so that means L into B is equal to pi r square. Okay, so the value of r would be under root of L into B upon pi. Agreed, my dear friends. This is simple mathematics. No rocket science. Okay. So the the value of R is under root of L into B upon pi. So I return to my video. What I do is the value of R here. I will change. The value of R would be square root of L into B divided by square root of pi. P I pi. That's it. Enter. So, when just clicking upon the enter, the area of the two figure becomes equal. You just saw, my dear friends. Just putting the value r, which is under root l b upon under root pi, or you can say the whole under root l b upon pi. I have just inserted this particular expression. In the way, at the place of, uh, in the uh, in front of, in the place of radius, you can see r can be evaluated as under root or the square root of l b upon pi. I have just inserted the value. The r can be evaluated as square root of l b upon square root of pi. One and the same thing. Now, if I just change the length, say 25, you just with the blink of eye, the both the areas would are being constrained, which will will be changed, and they would be equal. See, 250. 250 is the area of the rectangle, and 250 is the area of the that uh, rect uh, circle also. And now, if I just move it a bit far away so that the things become clear. Now, even if even if you just see the changing, you can just repeat. I say I make it 30. The length, the area changes. Agreed, my dear friend. Even if I change the breadth also, say I change to 15. the both the areas are changing also but they are still remaining same so in this video we have learned how to equalize the both the areas of any two of any two regular geometrical figures i hope you enjoyed this video and in the next video i'll be taking up the irregular figures but up till now keep practicing keep learning and happy drafting thanks for watching thanks a lot my dear friends thanks a lot